55 here. For those of you who are new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. I am an NGS player, and I'm going to make a separate video talking more about that. I'm about 800 hours in, and I did play the base game as well. Anyway, that's enough about me. Uh, let's look at this review. Frozen Resolution with Hero Arai interviewing the dev team. So, one of the first things he talked about was the title update. He talked about how that was Sandstorm Requiem and that there was a release of songs and that was the main theme behind. So they wanted to know, so he asked, what is the main theme behind the title, Frozen Resolution? And the dev team said it's about a region for friends and family. Players will understand more after they see Ina, Manon, and their new friends, Kaka and Mary, face hardships in Kiveris. So the hero says, so players will see the characters resolve in camaraderie, camaraderie as they take on challenges. Yes, exactly. Man, nobody cares. <laughs> we need that element is almost in every JRPG or, or game where people care about it. That's just a basic staple. It doesn't interest me as far as storylines concerned. So I'm hoping they do better than that. So Hero asked, can you tell us more about the title logo and the, silu the silhouette in it? And the dev team, as some may have noticed with the Redem logo, we put a silhouette of the iconic enemy from the update in the logo. The dev team calls this the region boss. Since the update is yet to be released, we can't tell you its name or its characteristics, but we do hope that the silhouette sparks your imagination. And looking at it, it definitely does. He looks like a pretty big uh, boss. He doesn't look like your standard dragon. Got a long tail, he's running. Looks pretty interesting. Here will arrive next axe. The forest region seems to be a very harsh and dangerous environment with all the snow and ice. Can you introduce some of the highlights of the region and its fields? The dev team responded, the Kavaris region has sweeping fields of snow as far as the eye can see that make you want to grab your gear and go skiing and snowboarding. It also has landmarks like enormous mountains that naturally make you want to reach the summit. Also, we are adding a new player action that allows you to ride a floating board down the icy mountains and through the snowy fields. Sometimes when we think of the snowy mountains, we also think of hot springs. So naturally, Caveras also has hot springs where we hope players can gather to relax with friends and alliance members. So I'm guessing that's what a lot of people are going to do. Instead of having that basic little hub like they have in Alio or in Redham, where you can go in and people just hang out in the city, which was my favorite activity. I guess you're going to do it around hot springs since they don't have a central place. Um, as far as the bo floating board action, I mean... That was dope for me back in like 1997 when Final Fantasy VII came out. I don't see, just being honest, New Genesis adding anything to that that's going to really change the system. Hero or I? Okay. That sounds like a great place to take photos. Redham has spots like that as well, right? Dev Team, yes, you want to have some scenic spots where players can have fun taking screenshots. I'm not into photos, so I don't really care, but for those who are, you know, knock yourself out. Hero asked, I've seen many players post screenshots of random photo spots on social media, so I think the arts, stagrammers out there will enjoy snapping pics and virus too. On the other hand, there was some mini-game-esque gameplay during my playtest, I believe it was called Field Races, in which you run a specific course on the exploration field, can you tell us what inspired you to add to this game? Dev team, we wanted to implement some multiplayer content outside of combat for a while now. With this update, players will have a new way to enjoy the open field casually alone or with others. Multiple players can compete against each other in races, and solo players can play time attack mode and try to break their fastest record. By the way, these will not be limited to Kavaris. There will be two an alio and one in redem we've got some exclusive tasks as well and we hope players can wind down in between adventures and battles and i'm happy about that because i know that people are going to want to race but 
you know, and I know that they want to create new game loops, but one of the things I think a lot of players want in New Genesis are activities with rewards that make it worth it. And I understand it has to be a delicate balance between forcing people to do content so the rewards can't be too high, but you can really curb that by making those rewards also available in other ways. Me personally, I'm kind of like Karopi. I love the farm. I can sit in um, battle areas and just farm battle zones and just farm for hours, put on an audio book and just chill out or just go on the phone with the homies and talk. So, you know, but I think with the uh, running, I'm going to try it because it is something new. It's a new minigame, but I think what's going to keep my keep me going back to it is you probably need some good friends to do it with but it's gonna have to compete with Ernie Masetta trying to get better armor trying to uh, use your money to do things it's competing so while it's fun and it's a different gameplay loop you gotta think about how it competes with other things all right so in the next session he talks about Carvez Kavaris region requirements. Here are I. Could you explain what players need to do before they can set foot in Kavaris dev team? Players need to complete Redham's main story, a happy ending. Here are I. Players need to complete all of Alio's stories to go to Redham, so it's the same this time as well. What level do you need to be dev team? Enemies in Kavaris are at least level 37, so players need to be above level 33 with the battle power of 18, 13 or higher. And, you know, I obviously get we're at level 45, so we get to run through them, especially with a six-star weapon. That's good, too, because something I would like to see more in NGS is us being able to be overpowered. Like I said, I know many of you are thousands of hours in or a couple of hundred hours in or whatever it is, but... It, you know, when you play RPGs or MMORPGs, it feels good to be overpowered. So I'm not complaining about them enemies being at level 37. Plus, you have to make the content available for newer players and people who want to get in the game. And if it's too high, so I'm cool with that. Uh, Kavaris region, Kavaris camp. Hero Rai. Now, I'd like to ask you about the Kavaris camp, which is the base in Kavaris. Unlike Central City and Redham City, it is not a city, but rather a camp. Is there a reason for this? Dev team, this time we journeyed to a place that was devastated by dolls and left abandoned decades ago. There are many arcs in Alia and Redham, and they were able to establish cities. Kavaris, on the other hand, is very harsh and unforgiving, and thus no city was formed. The Kavaris camp was set up as a temporary base for arcs, dispatched from Central City like our protagonist. Um, and they really have, I mean, anybody who played Final Fantasy XIV and Walker, you see what they did with their snowy field. I mean, if NGS can, in some shape or form, repeat that without me taking too much away from Final Fantasy XIV or Genesis, but I don't know why New Genesis has such a childish game uh, such a childish story you know like if, if the game is rated 18 it's rated mature for adults right so there's no reason why they don't go more hand with the story. i don't understand that but anyway that's supposed to be what that's about and that's, that's whatever um here all right i see during my play test i saw something in Kavaris camp that looked like a beacon of light in the center of the campsite can you tell me what that was? Dev team, it's like a lighthouse for their base camp. Hero arrived, so that was a landmark. I also wondered if there was a reason the NPCs in the shop were all robots. Dev team, the story behind this is that these robots were in the Convaris region before Arcs were sent from Central City. They were lost and wandered aimlessly until the Arcs came upon them. After studying them, the Arcs discovered they had a shopkeeper function, and so the rob robots tend to the shops now. Here we I'm curious. Can we ride the robots to move around the region? Dev team, there are currently no plans to make them into mounts. However, we plan to release motion changes where players can ride on them to dash and glide in the future. 
Adding features like mount that enable players to move faster than the regular Photon Dash will throw off the balance of the game. So if we were to release something that resembles a mount in NGS, it would be in the form of motion change. If we release a fast vehicle mount, we'll limit it to certain areas as we did with floating boards. That's fair, but as someone who, and I gotta compare experiences, right? Played Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV does an excellent job with mounts and it really helps you enjoy the world of Final Fantasy XIV more. I know that they're implementing the dash race in the open field or whatever it is, but I don't see how you can't just limit it. If you're going to limit it to certain areas, you can limit it to certain activities. And I really don't understand why it would throw off the balance of the game. Maybe they mean by throw off the balance of the game, they mean that it's going to... <laughs> uh, shorten the amount of content that they have is what they really mean to say. Because you know what you're going to do fast. That's one of the things that made Final Fantasy XIV so fast. All right, two new player actions here or I. The 4-28-22 uh, Thursday edition headline broadcast revealed two new player actions that are being released along with this region. Can you tell us more? Dev team, yes. Those would be the new throw action and floating boards. The first temporarily changes your attacks to a throwing action when you pick up an object in the field called Crystalline Ice. You can pick them up and throw them by pressing the normal attack button and deal tons of damage when you hit an enemy. There are also containers that you can destroy using this action as well as a trial where it will come in handy. Other than throwing crystalline ice, you can also use this throw action to hurl bombs released by enemies back at them. We're also working on developing more gameplay elements involving this in the future. Additionally, you can ride on floating boards and move faster than usual for a set amount of time. We recommend putting them to use during special trials and for efficiently collecting gathering items on a specialized course. Listen, if, if NGS, has us picking up these snowballs or rocks, whatever the case, and it's not taking like almost half the enemy's, enemy's life or 35% or some great amount in a very quick manner, it, that gameplay mechanic is gonna get born quick. Especially because we have to farm, we gotta kill stuff, so it has to do, and it says that it does a significant amount of damage, but you know how these developers are, man. They say one thing and we have our imagination of it and they have their imagination of what significant damages. Here or I had the opportunity to experience a trial involving these new actions when I played the test version of Kavaris, and it was very refreshing and fun. I also feel that the existing trials will now have more variation due to the unique environment of this region. Is this part of how you reflect the players' opinions and feedback from Alien and Redom? Dev Team, yes, we wanted to include these kind of elements in Redom, but we were unable to. I love Redom, but whatever. And thus players said that Redom wasn't that different from Alio and that there was not enough content. So when we worked on this update, we kept this in mind and consciously worked on these new gameplay elements to fulfill players' wishes. We believe that this is how we were able to add even more to the game than we originally planned. Eh, I mean, for me, <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't care what type of cartwheel loop or so whatever you got me doing. I, I, I feel like Karopi when he said, I just want to feel powerful. And um, after you've been playing a game for a certain amount of time, 800 hours, <coughs> and uh, you're still not able to one shot level five mobs and you know I can show my armor and what I got on there, whatever you want to say, I don't really care, but it doesn't feel rewarding enough in that way. But let's see what happens when these six star weapons come out. Hero Rai talks about co-op trials. The NPCs that fight alongside players in these co-op trials are quite different from previous NPCs. Why is that? Dev team, these NPCs are arcs sent from Central City just like our protagonists. The outfits are designed to help them navigate the world of snow and ice that is in the Convarvis region. <sighs> 
Speaking of cold weather gear, I know also has a new outfit. Dev team, Mangan's usual outfit is high performance, but Ina is quite simple. She now has better protection against the cold climate with her new gear. So I guess they're gonna be, because these NPCs, when they're in these trials with us, they're worthless, right? Let's just be, let's just keep it real. They, they're worthless, they don't do nothing. They just be standing there. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what damage they do, really. Except when you underpower the story mode, but after that part, they don't really do nothing. So I guess these guys are gonna play, maybe help help uh, help the uh, health. All right, how will you expand on these new actions? Here or right? I feel like the throw action and floating boards that we talked about now don't need to be limited to the Avaris region. It could be expanded to other areas of gameplay in the future. Are there any plans to do so? Dev team, we're developing a new type of quest which will require players to use a throw action to complete it. We'll give further details closer to its release. Additionally, we're planning to release more content for the field races you mentioned earlier. This will include some courses where players ride on floating boards so that something to look forward to. Racing with other players with the fully board sounds exciting. See, the thing about this, and I'll give them credit for it, is that if you're a new player coming into New Genesis right now, this game does feel, it feels great. But for those of us who've already been there, it's just like, man. Eh. But a mini game where you're fighting on a snowboard and using your weapons does sound, that sounds kind of hot. I'm feeling that. About the story, man, I could make a whole separate video on this and NGS's story, but let's see what they got to say. Hero or I, I would like to talk about the story as well. Can you give us a synopsis of the story? However much you're able to share is fine. Please also point out anything you like players to pay attention to. Dev team, first here's a synopsis of chapter three. Thanks to the protagonist, productive expedition and Redham, and the help of the locals, we were able to defeat Dark Falls when, we, when he attacked Central City. However, the Central Cannon was heavily damaged in the process. In preparation for a rematch for Dark Falls, Crawford sends the protagonist on a journey to Kavaris to find the missing researcher, Lama, who knows how to repair and further improve the Central Cannon. That's where the story continues. As for the highlights, we would like players to listen for slightly more comical exchanges and enjoy warm, home drama-like developments between the characters. On the other hand, action scenes are more dynamic than before, and we hope players enjoy those too. I don't know why they keep going this funny, lighthearted way with the game. I don't know if that's what people enjoy. I played the base game, and that was... the. the PSO2's base story mode was, oh my gosh, man. That was abysmal. I, I never skipped so much stuff in my life. I think I like Chapter 5 the most, but um, I think they should, yeah, I'm going to say it, man. I, I, I know you might hate me for it, or maybe you love me for it, but they need to follow what Final Fantasy XIV did. They gave us a deep storyline. We want to be connected to the characters and to the world. So, like, until you... Until you get a good, comedy is good once you got us hooked into the storyline. Anyway, let's continue. Hero Arai. Was the decision to expand on character development and the storyline based on requests from players who wanted to see more? Dev team. We have been developing these scenes before we receive feedback from players, so I wouldn't say so. However, we do think that the story is stronger compared to previous regions. On the other hand, in response to those requests, we decided to release regular mini events and updates from August onward. These will provide a deeper look into the main characters and further immerse our players into the world of NGS. Here or right, I see. A lot of times we don't know how the characters relate to each other. So this is great to hear. Speaking of which, some players were speculating about the relationship between Mary and Cuckoo, a Kuka, forgive me. This is Hero Rai speaking. After seeing the Kavaris trailer from NGS Headline. Dev team. I like Kuka's uh, design, uh, minus the, the 
dress looking thing. He's got he got a little Legend of, of Zelda stuff going on there. And Mary's got the the, the uh, Warhammer. I wouldn't mind having one of those uh, for weapon. Dev team, that might be a new class. That'd be a dope class, like a sledgehammer class or something like that. That'd be hot. Dev team, we can't say too much because it would spoil the story, but we will say that although Mary and Kuka live together, they are not in a relationship. Laughs. Other characters will be involved too, so we hope to look forward to seeing them. <sighs> All right, now to the good stuff. Battle powers and levels. All right. Hero arrive. I feel that the required battle power in Kaveris is generally on the higher end. For example, the requirement for Battle D of Purple is 2744. Looking at the numbers alone, that seems difficult to reach, especially for returning players. Are there any countermeasures in place? I'm hoping that uh, the Battle D has more gigantics that are different from our old ones and not any copy and paste. Dev team, to make it easier for players who took a break after completing the story and read them, you have prepared tasks that allow them to gain more experience. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Basically, they're gonna make it easier, um, but I, I won't skip it. So, in addition, there will be more than 50 side tasks available in Kavera, so you will be able to use them to get at least one class at level 60 rather smoothly. Hero arrive. I'm glad to hear that it won't be too difficult to level up my main class. At what pace will you raise the level cap beyond 60? If it continues to be unlocked at this quick place, I would think leveling up will start to feel tedious. Pause. Leveling up would not feel tedious, okay, if we could be more powerful, um, in my opinion. And I don't know who was complaining about leveling up in the first place. You you prefer collecting NX cubes? That's hot. That's what's up, son. That's, the, that's what they do in your hood. Niggas collect N cubes? The artichuck is whack. I mean, unless you can use it for something good, but for the most part, it doesn't really do anything. Leveling up was always a great part in traditional RPGs. It allows you to be more powerful, to get more health, to have more magic points, more strength, dexterity, defense. Make level. Let's 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 make leveling up great again, okay? Um, but I I don't know who was complaining about that. Like that crazy person who was complaining about um, what the f was it? Curse word, curse word. What the f was it? Uh, those little. Cubes we had to get for our weapons. Fold on scales. There we go. Like that crazy person who was complaining about um, photon scales not being rare enough. It's like, what is wrong with you? Anyway, dev team. In terms, we will raise it up to level 65 in October. Five levels. And plan a further release, increase the level cap in the December update as well. However, we will also review it depending on how things go. In terms of making it easier to train a character, we will be lowering the amount of earned experience that gets reduced when the enemy is at least five levels higher than the player. Hold on, let me read that again. In terms of making it easier to train a character, we will be lowering the amount of earned experience that gets reduced when the enemy is at least five levels higher than the player. Okay, I see. So they want us to be able to level up quicker. Um, again, I think this is a mistake. I think that being able to level up and making it worth it is worthwhile. Um, something that I did not care for in Walker was that levels were more symbolic than anything. Like you needed them, but you were literally jumping levels just by doing story mode. I don't want to go that route, but I like the earned progression that came from leveling up and they just I, I i don't know what what the why this is something that people are going away from but i just think they're going the wrong way with it additionally the earth experience reduction will be removed entirely and bad idea yellow because players 
Use their heart or battle triggers to play. That's fine, whatever. Hero or Rise, see, that'll be a great update. I think we might be able to challenge ourselves to level up our third and fourth classes if training is made easier. My question is, though, is like, the NGS seems to be very fixed on getting us to use other um, classes, right? All you have to do to get us to do other classes is um, how about you? Uh, hmm, how about you uh, make them powerful or worth it? You know, I listened to whole videos about people complaining about techers. Techers were one of the classes I was excited about. But then I heard all the videos about the garbage damage they do. Or I switched to another class and it, they don't do a lot of damage or it's not fun mobbing with them or whatever it is. I don't want to be weak and struggling when I play a game, you know? So if you want people, I don't know if experience the points that's their problem, it's an MMORPG. So people like grinding, I think the effing problem is that these niggas at Sega don't know how to make these these classes overpowered and fun. I mean, that was, that was part of the big fun. I, I'm repeating myself at this point, but I think you get it. Anyway, uh, next section is skills. Hero or ride. New skills will be added for each class. Are there any combinations you recommend or any skills that you would like to draw players' attention to from a development standpoint? There are many, but here are a few. For hunters, you recommend sword arts overcharge which becomes more powerful when charged for a certain amount of time. Recommend chain trigger count retained for gunners. This skill increases the number of chains at the start of the next chain trigger if it ends without a chain finisher. And for techers, we recommend wand art skip attack, which turns normal attacks into third step after using a series of PAs. Players can combine this with wand attack extra, which is a new class skill that will be released at the same time. This will add a fourth step to the wand's normal attack, making wands even more powerful. The katana PA combo finish is great for bravers. With this skill, your normal attack is gonna power up after the third step of a katana PA. There will also be other skills for each class that will change the way you play them, so please give them a shot. Here we Rod. We would also like to know more about the skills for other classes. Are there any announcements planned? Dev team, yes, we will introduce the other class skills in the NGS headline brawl class scheduled for the end of May. Please tune in to get the latest info. It's like, for example, here, what I'm talking about, like Techers, the art skip attack. I don't, I, and I know some people like the combinations and all like that, but if, if I have to, if I have to put in a lot of effort to do moderate to low damage, your class is getting skipped. Straight up. No cap. You know what I mean? And uh, are they going to do the same thing they did with Redom? Because in the Redom region, you were expecting the new skills. We waited how many months before we got them? So I'm not even expecting to see the new skills in June. Anyway, um, enemies. Hero Ride. Many new enemies, including bosses, await arcs in this region. Well, we saw some of them in the NGS headline on April 28th, Thursday. I'd like to hear more about their unique characteristics and how they differ from previous enemies. Dev Team. The new boss enemy, Crocodilus, throws an ex exploding object at you. Using the throw axe we mentioned earlier, players can fight by throwing it back, which makes this a new type of combat. Dope. Uh, Protoctyl's L and Proctyl's Retum are new enemies that use attacks from dolls from other regions. Their designs are pretty unique, so please keep an eye out for them. Also, some boss enemies in Kibaris buff up old nearby dolls when they appear, making mob attacks even more challenging. Kind of cool. You might even get a surprise visit from an iconic Wulan who many players enjoy fighting. Okay. Thank you for throwing in another rehash. I mean, we've been fighting Ula. I mean, I enjoy fighting him because he's easy to fight, but you know, I mean, him being thrown into this region randomly feels more lazy than it does innovative. You need some good enemies. And it'd be nice if there was some attachment to these enemies. They're just random 
enemies. There's no attachments. So I hope they do a better job with that. Hero Ride. Right. That makes sense. That's why I sometimes felt that I took extra damage during my playtest because a boss enemy was boosting the other enemies. Dev team, yes, exactly. So you will need to be careful when fighting regular enemies that appear along these boss enemies. Also, there are more new enemy types in Kavaris than in Redum. So we hope players look forward to that too. Hero Ride. I'm excited that we get to take on not only new variations of existing enemies, but also completely new ones. I really don't care about the new variation of existing enemies. I prefer games with just new types of enemies. The new variations are just, it's meh, you know? Mysterious creatures. All right, this sounds good. Hero or I, I encountered many non enemy creatures on the field during my playtest. What kind of species exist out there? Dev team, we called this unnamed wildlife environmental creatures within the developed team. The ecosystems in Kavaris are more varied. Okay, good. Variety is welcome. Then in Redham, there are snowman-like ones, snail-like ones, creatures that look like spotted garden eels, and more. Since their behavior vary between locations, we think players will enjoy exploring and having fun, taking screenshots even more than before. And I'm on this mysterious creatures like... It'd be tight if they had like more world events where like maybe we go to run into, um, <laughs> you know, to, to farm some teams and one of them end up being like this giant boss creature and then there's a story wrapped around it. Some, stuff like that makes it more RPG like and, and good since that's what they're trying to go for. Uh, Hero Arise. See, I was so engrossed in everything that I didn't notice all the different behaviors during my playtest. Dev team, to be honest, I wish we had gone one step further and made them react to the players' movements. Okay, that's what they did in other ones, but whatever. Hero Ride, I look forward to seeing that in future updates. Laughs. By the way, are there any plans to make mag forms and accessories based on this wildlife? Dev team, we have no plans to do so right now, but we do, but we'd be happy to consider it if many users request them. Hero Ride. I believe I'm not the only player who's a fan of these environmental creatures, so I hope you do. All right, cool, whatever. Um, <clears throat> urgent quest, hero arrive. Will there be two types of urgent quests for this region as well? Dev team, yes, there will. And one of them players will fight the Vera version of the previously mentioned Crocodilus. This will be an urgent quest with new mechanics, introducing players to new combat experience. Dope. We like to keep the other urgent quests under wraps for now to avoid spoiling the fun. Here we are. Oh, now I really can't wait for the release. Yeah, me too. Ray Dord George. Here we are. I explored a sector during my play test where my character took damage just by moving around. Can you tell me more about this? The damage was so great that I couldn't even explore it properly, so I also like to hear about some strategies to mitigate it. Dev team, there must be Ray George George. This particular area of Kavaris is a tough exploration sector where you will consistently take low temperature damage. Again, that's cool, provides a new experience, but if there are no rewards there or enemies worth killing, if it's not worth it, players will just ignore it. Straight up. Just like they did um, with the lower ranks in Redum. You know what's what I'm talking about. Uh, where all the enemies have the high HP and they're tougher, but you get no extra reward for it. So what do people do? They just... They just ignore it. And I don't blame them. I don't see any reason to fight stronger enemies if I'm not going to get rewarded for it. So why am I going to sit in an environment that causes me to waste those green healing rest of signs and, and, and lose HP and I'm not getting rewarded for it? I'm not. I'm just going to farm somewhere else where it's easy. I'll go run a main and the area is going to be completely wasted for no reason. To keep up your energy... <clears throat> The dev team continues. You can strengthen your resistance to this damage with boost effects from region mags. 
quick food buffs from Kavaris gathering items, as well as boost items from NPCs and drops. There will also be new augments that boost your resistance to low temperature damage. So we hope players try to few different methods to find what works best for them. By the way, you want to get your character ready and buffed up the first week after Kavaris releases because an extremely powerful enemy will be waiting for you in the depths of the Ray Door George after that. Okay, all right, we'll work with that. So about this new augment, I'm a little worried that affixing this to counter the low temperature damage will make my gear Kavaris only and less useful in other regions. That's so. Dev team, you're right in that this particular augment will only be useful in Kavaris. It looks like the name of it is Decode Might. And what does it do? Low temp damage resistance 25 plus melee weapon potency only 2.5. So I see we're still sticking around that area. All right, I didn't know. But um, is that so? Again, the dev team says, you're right in that this particular augment would only be useful in Kavaris. However, we have also prepared other augments that combine this resistance boost with potency boost that would be useful for any region. Okay, that works. And I guess that's where that 2.5 will be useful until we get some augments that are three point something. Here or I see how would players get their hands on these new augments dev team they drop in rage or gorge as you fight the enemies there so you will need to use the region mag or quick food boost first to get lower temperature damage resistance to take on enemies in the sector before you'll be able to get the augment capsules you need here all right thank you for explaining that i definitely want to make sure i get those augment capsules one of uh, hoshi might enjoy this but i don't know if he's going to get back into it NGS did such a horrible job that he's not motivated to uh, be bothered with that. You all will know Hoshi. He will be with us in these NGS things at some time soon to come. Weapons and items. Hero arrive. And the NGS headline on April 28th, we announced that the Kavaris region release will come with the six star weapon series, the Setchel series, and the Evil Clip series. Did the user's request play a big part in the decision to release these for all weapon categories, dev team? Absolutely. Players have said that they can't create the multi-weapons they want when the series did not include all weapons. For future updates, we plan to nerf any good combinations. Oh, sorry. That was my, <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm, I'm sorry. I had some uh, double saber trauma flashback memories. What it actually says is for future updates, we plan to develop weapon series on include all categories. And what is with them, man? Nerfing anything that's like mad powerful, how they nerfed that bouncer PA. Like, yo, let people have fun. Like, what is the point of letting people make multi-weapons and come up with these creative ways to use weapons and become powerful? You're just gonna nerf everything. And then you leave the other crap in the game. Like, come on, yo. See, 255 is not, <laughs> I am not an official NGS creator. Not that the ones who are don't criticize the game, but I will really criticize the mess out of the game. I don't know, fly F. You know, shout out to Gimma. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> anyway, out dev team, out of all of the six star weapon series, the sexual series is the easiest to get from drops. In addition to buffing your regular potency, their potential also provides extra potency against non-boss enemies. Easier for farming. The Evil Clip series is also very powerful. You'll get increased potency as well as natural PP recovery after a successful sidestep dodge. That already makes the set your weapons more interesting to me, unless they do that much more or less damage than the Evil Clips. You can exchange your Convaris Expedition prep tickets from an ongoing campaign for this series. So venture forth and upgrade your gear more and more. All right. <clears throat> and I think that's about it. Well, uh, 255 here. Let me see if you have anything left worth uh, discussing. You still have some more stuff here. All right, so here or Rai. I'm excited to hear that a strong weapon is relatively easy to obtain. However, it also gives me a feel that an even stronger weapon will 
debut in the future. Can you tell us anything about that? Yes. Give us more relics. D uh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, I heard people farm for hours if you can get that. Dev team, while we are preparing more powerful weapons for the future, you will need to use current ones to meet the requirements for when you get them. That's base PS2 like. Okay, that's dope. So we believe that adding the sexual and evil clip series to your armory will be very beneficial regardless. It's about time. Okay, I can work with that. You're all right. I see. So in order to get even better weapons, we'll need to make sure we can take on the battles in Kavaris first. Other additions. <coughs> Hero Arrive. This update will introduce an auto sell feature that users have been requesting. Besides that, I'm sure there are many other features that will be added or improved. Are there any in particular that the dev team wants to highlight? Dev team, yes, there are. This is somewhat related to the auto sell function. We wanted to relieve some of the pressure on the inventory in Kavaris. To achieve this, we plan to remove weapon and armor drops, four stars, and under and increase the amount of Mesetta that drop to balance things out. However, please be assured that this will not affect silver and gold type weapons, so they will drop as usual. We also plan to build a quest counter where players will be able to replace story events and quests. This feature has also been strongly requested by our players. In the future, we will add limited time quests to the counter. So keep an eye out for that too. Additionally, we have a new face option called the imposing face in the works, which you can use to create more mature characters. Make sure to check that out as well. All right, more character creation is always good. Hero Arai, I see. I can already see muscular old men showing off their gains in the city using this face option. All right, that's kind of funny. Speaking of which, where will we be able to get new avatar items for Mary and Kuka, such as their hairstyles? We plan to release those in the SG Scratch ticket. And what will be an interview without hearing about SG Scratch tickets? They don't talk about it much in the interview, but watch when that um, update comes. <laughs> you may see uh, plenty of Scratch tickets. All right. Finally, we conclude with a message from the development team. Hero Arai, are there any other parts that you particularly focused on or maybe struggled with when developing the Carvaris region? Dev team, yes. More so than with past regions, we focused on expanding and adding new player actions and ways to explore. Even as we speak now and up until the release date, the entire team is dedicated to developing and making improvements so we can deliver the best experience possible to our players in June. Hero Arai, thank you very much. Last but not least, do you have a message from the development team to players in anticipation of the upcoming release? Thank you all very much for playing and supporting. And yes, looking at our development progress, we are confident that our players will like the Kavaris region, and we look forward to seeing you there. Stay tuned for the release of major updates in June. And we hope you'll have fun exploring the frozen tundra. Thank you very much. You're all right. Thank you very much for your time today. <coughs> all right. So I went through the whole interview. Ran my mouth, uh, my first, uh, hopefully, of uh, many videos to come with NGS. I hope the, the Tundra region is good, and I hope to continue to cover this. I might drop content for it uh, weekly or bi-weekly, depending on what's going on in Fantasy uh, Star. All right, this is 255. You stay to the end. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is 255. Out. One. Peace. Thank you.